With the Banking Royal Commission final report just days away and so many horror stories already told, here's one you still need to hear. It's about a bank that made a pregnant widow homeless even though she had the money to keep paying her late husband's mortgage. What question have you got for the bank? Why? Why did you do what you did? Oh, I think it's quite disgusting the way they've treated her. No one should have to go through what Stephanie had to go through. Stephanie Stevens' story is full of love. We were probably the happiest we could have ever been, just knowing that we were going to become parents. And loss. He was just amazing. He put everybody else first. <laughs> it's also about incredible willpower. Okay, you struggle. Right, be proud. And the power of a will. A lot of people don't talk about it, don't talk about wills, but you don't realise the pain and the heartache that's still going on. Because without this legal piece of paper, the Grim Reaper comes in all forms. What's your experience been like dealing with Bank West? Basically, um, they were vultures. Are you married, Steph? <laughs> yes. Yeah. When Stephanie's fiancé, Ryan, proposed, the loved-up couple were unaware two lives were about to become three. Yeah, we found out the week after our wedding, um, yeah, that we were about five weeks pregnant, which was really special, because um, I was told I couldn't have kids, and we'd been trying for three years. Ryan loved adventure and exploring the sand dunes on his ATV buggy. He used to just take his ATV out and um, fly his drone above and have footage of him driving it and just make videos. But a more mundane trip to the rubbish dump turned out to be Ryan's last on his beloved toy. And his dad told me there had been an accident and I just kept saying, but he's okay, isn't he? Like, he's fine, he's okay. Um, because you don't think that's ever going to happen to you. Six months after Ryan's death, Stephanie gave birth to Wally. But this bright light was soon overshadowed by Steph's bank over the couple's mortgage. People wouldn't talk to me. We were married, um, but that didn't matter. There was no will. Like more than half of all Australians, Ryan didn't have a valid will. So the divvying up of his estate fell to the state government. The couple had a mortgage with Bank West, but it was only in Ryan's name. I wanted to keep the home that we lived in, that we renovated, that we had so many memories in. For me and Ollie, something to hold on to throughout all the darkness. Down at the station. With no will in place, Stephanie was frozen out by Bank West until Ryan's life insurance and superannuation was sorted out. Steph's mum, Wendy, saw her daughter's nightmare with a bank unfold. There was just no one person that picked it up um, that would actually speak to Steph and deal with it. It was different people all the time and then it was the lawyers and, and you know, that they couldn't even put it through to the deceased estate people. You know, it was just... It was like hitting your head against a brick wall. As a mountain of correspondence between Steph and Bankwest grew, the unpaid monthly mortgage repayments compounded the pain for the widowed mum. It took five months for Stephanie to be officially named as Ryan's beneficiary. But by then, Ryan's life insurance didn't cover the entire mortgage, falling around 30 grand short. They let interest accrue, they let legal fees go onto it administration fees, and then they wouldn't let me buy the property. Stephanie's yeah, parents, nice Wendy and Brad, there. offered to be guarantors for the property and a loan to cover the 30k shortfall. But Bank West repossessed the home and auctioned it off. The couple first bought the four better for 520000 in 2013, but someone picked it up five years later for a bargain 450000 if they just accepted what I was offering, then we could have our home. There's been plenty of times when Steph has told us both that she would like to be where Ryan is and has parents. That's pretty gut-wrenching um, to, to uh, have your 
child tell you that. The fallout from Ryan's death has impacted the entire family. Wendy quit work to help Stephanie raise Ollie, while Brad works out of town to keep the money coming in. Ollie is most probably something really special that's brought us all a bit further along the journey and, and, and kept us sane and, and kept us to um, what we need to do as a family. Bankwest made more than $681 million last year, helping its parent, Commonwealth Bank, post more than $9 billion. So you've got to ask yourself, why would a financial behemoth like this make life a living nightmare for a widow grieving the loss of her husband and carrying the couple's unborn child? For being greedy, this is why we're here. And the bank's been greedy? Yes. Yeah. And they, they forgot about being human. Unhappy banking advocate Jeff Shannon is calling out Bank West. He says, despite selling Steph's house for around $70,000 less than the loan owed to the bank, Bank West could claim back the loss and other fees through insurance. They just seen the dollar signs with, you know, we've got insurance here, it's going to cover all our legals, it's going to cover everything, we don't have to worry about anything. You know, and that's, that's, the, that's the line, that's the path they took. It's the wrong path. Bank West admits it badly let Steph down. In a statement to a current affair, the bank said, We acknowledge that the level of support Mrs. Stevens experienced from Bank West fell short of her expectations during a very distressing period of her life, and we apologise for this. They took our home and I needed to find a new one to try and give everything that I could to our son. Distraught and feeling pressure to put a roof over Ollie's head, Stephanie rushed into buying another place. What did you end up buying? Just a bit of a nightmare, really. The offer was accepted and I did a building inspection. Um, and then that's when the issues started to come out. The home is a lemon, but Stephanie was locked into the contract. She now spends her Saturdays with her dad fixing the place up. Just having a will in place saves so much heartache and so much pain for your loved ones if the worst thing imaginable happens, which it did to us. And the more people that have wills in place, the less the banks can take advantage, the less pain they can cause. Each passing Christmas of Ryan's death doesn't make things any easier for Steph. But today, an ever so slight silver lining. This is the laundry. Jeff um, Shannon's arrived with his son-in-law, Adam, from MNC Construction. Adam's a chippy who's volunteered to help with Steph's reno. It's a waterproofing nightmare. While Jeff rallies other tradies to pitch in. I couldn't sit back and, and, and watch this happen and, and watch Steph have to, you know, try and fix this mess that the bank created for her. They can't live here. And I won't let them live here till this is till this is fixed. Meanwhile, Bank West is happy to let the kindness of others make amends for this mess. In a typically callous corporate response, the bank's using this abject failure as a learning curve. We're lifting our standards of customer care, especially for customers with complex or sensitive needs, to ensure they receive better and more personalised support now and in the future. With the dodgy asbestos fence out back and rising damp inside, there's major work ahead. Steph isn't looking for handouts, but right now, any helping hand is much appreciated. It gives me hope. Ollie and I will have not just a beautiful home, but a safe home. It will just help me and Ollie so much. I can save that little bit of extra money that it would be for me and Dad to do it, and I can put that towards his education or sports, just anything for him. Yeah, that means a lot. What a lovely gesture. If only the pen pushers at Bankwest had been as kind.